Some people really, really love this, and some people really, really hate it. Sort of more in the middle. I would agree this is not a good film, but it's a very difficult, rare case where it's right on the knife's edge. There's just enough good stuff to recommend it. So if you have free time and you're not doing anything better, I would say watch it. But if you don't see it, you're not missing too much. So what's going on? Well, this is very weird because I don't know the franchise all that well. Now, I usually know most horror franchises pretty well, but Texas Chainsaw is sort of an exception. I did see the remake in the early 2000s with Jeff Eel, which probably does not represent the franchise very well. And the story itself is extremely plain. Essentially, some millennials show up in a seemingly deserted town and accidentally butt into some weird locals and inadvertently anger Leatherface, who then goes on a rampage. There are characters, sort of, and they have names like Melody and Dante, etc., etc., but really, the characters are extremely thin. They're just being set up to be slaughtered. Leatherface is unleashed, he does his thing, and that's about it. So, for what it is, it's fairly basic, and I have no problem with that if a horror film wants to get back to basic and strip everything away and be just very, very visceral and core and just be very raw, perfectly fine. I think Halloween 4 is a really good example of that. But this feels like really a ripoff of Halloween 2018 and sort of taking a similar premise. Let's just have a very basic kind of serial killer monster go on a rampage and really indulge in the sheer grossness and just him killing people in a stylish way. And if that's what you want, a very basic but well done kind of horror film, this will work for you. But I usually want my horror to be a little bit more elevated. I prefer psychological horror like Psycho or The Birds or even some M. Night Shyamala, like old Sixth Sense. I know most people wouldn't consider that horror, but I do. So if you want more sophisticated horror, this is not for you. This is very well shot. It looks beautiful. Some of the set pieces are very well done and well directed. So it looks stylishly very well done. It looks very professional. But in terms of the writing and the myth making, it's very, very basic. It doesn't feel as inspired as some of Fed Alvarez's other work. And this is the first film, I think, by David Blue Garcia. So it's kind of hard to say if this is going to be what he's going to do in future work. So it's very basic storytelling. It is good in places, but in a lot of places, it's fairly exploitive. It goes for very, very easy tropes. That said, there's a lot of things here where people are saying it's woke. I, I don't see that. I actually, it seems to be taking shots at both the left and right. Of course, the right wing gets more shots, but they're kind of making fun of everybody. I just don't think the comedy and satire are very well done. That the acting is competent, and for what it is, it's fine. But I didn't find anybody particularly outstanding. Leatherface feels a lot more like Michael Myers. He doesn't feel like his own icon. It feels like they're just doing a pastiche of other horror films and just putting in this film. So for what it is, it's fine. But I think for Netflix, this does feel a little disappointing because, again, Netflix is usually good with auteurs, with giving them a big budget, giving them free reign and scope. And even if you don't like the particular film, at least you feel, wow, they really made it an ambitious project. Like, I'm not a big fan of The Irishman, but I felt them going for great. I myself prefer Manx and things like that. I think those are genuinely great. They don't just have a great ambition, but they are great themselves. This feels very kind of low-key, and it just it gets the job done. It's a slasher film, and it's very over-the-top in places. Clearly, they're kind of parroting the genre in places, but it just doesn't seem to have the classical feel or even political subtext that the first one had. I also, from what I know from doing research, that the first one gets a bad reputation for being very gory. It's not. There's apparently not even a lot of blood. So it's kind of misunderstanding the roots of the genre. It's kind of misunderstanding the origins of the actual film. That said, there are tons of callbacks. So if I knew more about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I might be more impressed. But I'm a more casual fan, so it just felt like this is retreading the ground of the recent Halloween films. But it's not as annoying. Those I felt were bad and annoyingly stupid. Here it's more charming, so I didn't feel annoyed, but it's not good enough to say this is a legit good film. It has enough good stuff that it's right on the edge. At the same time, you kind of wish they were a little bit more ambitious, tried to go a little further with what they're doing. So it just seems more satisfied with presenting a fairly generic horror film. And if you like stylishly done gore, this will work for you. If you wanted something more, probably going to be a little disappointed and want to look at something else. I'd give this a 5.5. 
I would recommend it, but it's a weak recommendation. So it's a little disappointing, but overall, it was entertaining. I, I, I didn't feel annoyed. I didn't feel like it was a chore to watch it, but I would say coming from Netflix, you did expect more from this team 